Welcome to Payroll Certification Review Accounting 165. I recognize that this class is probably going to be different than any other class that you've had in that we have a, a recommended textbook. It's not required, but this textbook will not be, we won't go through it page by page and we're not going to go through it consecutively. So I do encourage you to pay attention carefully to the syllabus and to the assignments for each week. It will help guide you through what's available in the textbook for the topic area that we're studying. The other piece with here, because this course was intended to assist students in preparing for fundamental payroll certification exam sponsored by the American Payroll Association. There are additional resources that you should save your dollars and get those resources to ensure that you pass the exam. What we cover here in Accounting 165 is a review. It would assist in giving you topic areas, but due to cost, we cannot require our DMAC students that are not taking the exam to um, pay for those resources. With that in mind, I do encourage you to read all of the announcements as they come up. There are bits or pieces of information within those announcements. Our course itself will operate through our course content and to get started here for the term, I encourage you to look at uh, Introduction to Rebecca's Course folder and the items that are within there and once you've worked through theirs, then go into your Unit 1. I do want to point out some items that you will find each week in that course content for the unit that is assigned. The first piece is the assignment itself. This is copied from the syllabus. It is possible that throughout the term I will make adjustments to the syllabus as I am working through what I feel is best to help students in the learning process. Another piece is the Fundamental Payroll Certification Candidate Handbook. Again, for any that are taking that exam, you will need a copy of this handbook and learn the details that are within it. There are some requirements for enrolling in the exam that are not typical. For example, you have to contact the American Payroll Association before you set your appointment in when you're going to take the exam. So just keep in mind that that handbook has lots of details in it that are not normal. Uh, they're, they're getting control, I will say, over the candidates for that exam. Other pieces that I have, what you'll see each week is a weekly resources folder and within there I'll have a variety of PowerPoints or articles or other resources that you'll need. I do want to point out something for week one. Uh, in our unit or module one, the concepts that we have, make sure that at the end of the session you've reviewed each of these items. The page numbers over here on the right hand side refer back to the fundamental payroll certification book that you, one would pay for using the APA resources. Uh, so you can ignore those at the same time. It had some excellent listing of those lessons. You'll want to pay attention to those each week as to what we have. And the other piece of that, if there's a topic area that you're going, I have no clue. Make sure that you let me know so that we can draw out either where it is in the book or where it is in the videos or in the PowerPoints that are provided. As you see next, there are a variety of items. This Unit 1 PowerPoint with no audio is basically what was used for doing these videos down here, uh, part 1 through 10. The order is not exactly the same as I was doing the PowerPoints, I, uh, recordings, I uh, adjusted how some of those slides 
were fit into the presentation. I do recommend that you take a look at the PowerPoint without the audio. I recommend highly that you listen to each of these videos. They are five minutes in length because of the resource I was using at the time. Uh, they're from Camtasia, so maximum I could have was a five minute video. Uh, that does allow you to work through the information in, uh, I'll say, short snippets which is helpful in the learning process. In the midst, it is possible that as I have questions from students or I see issues that aren't understood that I will add additional ones. Also in our course content for the week, uh, you'll, here you see there at, at this time there are three, I'm going to say quizzes or tests for you to work through. The purpose of these is to help you go into resources and find the information. You're not simply looking for answers. You have to know the full scope of the information because a test on the FPC exam or on a later test that I give might have that same information in a way different way looking at a different part of the theory. So don't just look for the answers to these questions, but make sure that you understand the theory as to why that answer is correct. It is possible that in the midst of these quizzes that you have or these tests that you have, you will not be able to find the answer to that question in your textbook or within any of these weekly resources with the PowerPoint itself and or the recordings where I've talked through the theory. Although I've tried really hard to do that, uh, making sure that you have information to answer the questions, it is possible that I have found a question or a topic area, a theory piece that I know you need to know, but I have failed in some way to make sure you have the resource to answer that. My goal is not for students to get frustrated, so just simply ask me or ask the class, where can I find the answer to this question? And it is possible that you'll have to go searching online. Please recognize my goal is to prepare students for the possibility of taking that FPC exam. Uh, my goal is not to stump students and not to frustrate you, but for you to learn. So let's keep that communication going as needed to ensure that you are learning and uh, a certain el element of frustration is understood in the learning process. It pushes us forward. At the same time, I don't want you spending many hours trying to find an answer to something that all I have to do is provide it. So. With that in mind, one of the places that I will be using for giving you information is the discussion board. So there might be topic areas that I could not figure out how to fit that into the video. I couldn't figure out how to fit it into uh, PowerPoint. And so I'll be using this discussion board. So I encourage you to take very seriously what is presented on the discussion board, the questions that are asked, and the answers to those. Our goal is for you to be proficient in payroll when you uh, complete this course. Proficient means you know where to find the answers, and if you're taking that FPC exam, you have to know it in your head, or that know that that resource would be provided for you, thinking of uh, federal income tax tables, you're not expected to memorize those. However, you do need to be able to utilize them. Communication is really essential in here, so you can use messages right here within Blackboard. I do encourage that rather than email. My email box gets really full and I have four online courses, so this helps me keep track of which class that you're in several students that I have are in several classes so even though I see a name sometimes it, it, 
just putting the messages here in Blackboard helps me know which class are you working with. Uh, some other things that I had are uh, knowledge, skills, and abilities. This is for that fundamental payroll certification exam. Uh, these are pieces that you need to know. And of course, because this is spot, the FPC exam is sponsored by the American Payroll Association, I have a link to their resource. And finally, at the very bottom, it's not that it's insignificant, but if you have questions, uh, something outside of our topic area, or something outside of, you know, accounting itself, or the administrative forum is a place that we can use for this extra stuff. I do welcome any communication up here in our discussion board. So, you know, just use something to communicate, and if Oh, you can call me too, I don't have that resource here. Uh, if you do communicate with me in one method and you don't hear back from me within 24 hours, try it again. Because I have had emails that have gotten lost in the system. There were uh, problems with uh, uh, DMAC and, and ultimately a server went down and emails are lost. and a variety of other things taking place. So my goal is to communicate with you ASAP so you can move forward. So if it's if I haven't communicated within 24 hours, please let me know. Otherwise, I look forward to this term and working with you and I look forward to your communicating back with me with questions, problems, or comments.